the application. It looks like it looks like you have uh, Pamela Mullen is an attendee now. Oh, great! Good. So might be moot. Moot point. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I won't use moot. That's a lawyer term. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. But Matt, Matt, I really do want to know what what that says. So. <laughs> I do too. I just didn't want to do it in public. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then Ben, if you could mute my microphone so that any background noise doesn't interfere with the meeting, I cannot even mute myself. Okay, I'll do it. And just wave your hand if you want to be unmuted. Okay, thank you. All right, so Pamela Mullen has been promoted to a panelist and she's currently muted. I'll, I'll unmute her. Pamela, are you there? Hello, yes, I am. Okay, great. And do we have, uh, there's Mike, Mike's back as well. Pamela, you can disregard the voicemail I just left you. I was just checking. Oh, you. thank you. I, 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 I tried to do it on my other computer and it just says, please wait for the host to start. So I'm not sure what's going on. Anyway, here we are. Right, well, very good. Well, what I'll do then is uh, I, I will go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, I heard some chatter earlier, Matthew. I, did you have something that you wanted to cover or we can do that later on? Uh, no, we're, we're good to go. Um, the applicant is on online as it were. So my issue and uh, it does need not be addressed. So very good. Okay, okay. Well, I'll call the meeting to order. I wanna welcome everybody to the March 23rd uh, 2021 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, the meeting will come to order. This is a public proceeding and unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, you have the right to hear everything that is being said and to look at all the exhibits that are offered. Please notify uh, myself, the chair, if you're unable to hear or see what's going on. I know we've, we're experiencing, uh, this is a, an unusual time and technology can be challenging. So if anybody has any questions or concerns or misses anything, uh, please shout out. Um, we work as a board, we work from a prepared agenda and we'll be considering tonight's items in the following order. Um, we'll do a roll call. Uh, we will seek approval of the minutes from, I think it was back in January when we last met. And then we will move forward with uh, new business, which is the pending application. Uh, as for the new business being considered, the burden is upon the applicant to demonstrate compliance with the provisions of the applicable ordinance or, or ordinances. After the board votes on the merits of each project application, uh, we will prepare a written opinion. And because the written opinion may substantially affect any appeal rights, and also as a matter of courtesy, the board asks that those attending the meeting with regard to a specific project not leave until the board has taken this second vote adopting a written opinion. Generally speaking, appeals from adverse decisions must be filed with the Superior Court, except as otherwise provided by law within 45 days of this board's decision. Also, to be certain that you preserve your individual right to file any such appeal, you must be certain that this board's uh, record evidences your appearance this evening and the basis for your support or opposition. Again, remember this is a public proceeding and you have the right to hear and see what is happening. All persons speaking will be asked to first state their name and, uh, and address or affiliation. Uh, again, if there are any questions, uh, we, we try to uh, be a pretty welcoming, uh, amicable board. So any questions, feel free to, uh, to shout out. And in the meantime, I'll go ahead and, and call the roll. Mike Valancourt, Chair, uh, in attendance. Yeah. Aaron Mosher, member in attendance. Kevin Just, member in attendance. So I, I, man, I, I mentioned I, I wasn't I was going to call the roll and then I didn't call it. So we've got Aaron, we've got Kevin, Joe, speak up. Joe Barbieri here, present. Thank you. Uh, Matt Caton here, present. Michael. Michael Tatum Whelan, present. And we have uh, Ben McDougal, who's the town code enforcement officer. We also have Carmen Weatherby here this evening, 
uh, who is uh, who is taking taking notes, uh, taking the minutes for the meeting, and Pamela Mullen. Pamela, are you still on? I am. Can you not see me? I can't see you, but I can hear you. Well, what's up with that? Um, if you go to the bottom left, you have a, a mute button and a video button. You should be able to click start video if, okay. if you want to. There we go. There we go. Okay, here I am. And uh, hello, Pamela Mullen, 44 Two Lights Road. And this is Fred Berenger, a neighbor who did the drawings and hopefully will do some car the carpentry. Very good. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I referenced the minutes from January, and in fact, it was w way back in 2020. And so that's the first item on our agenda is approval of the minutes for December 2nd, 2020. Right? No. No. No, that's not right at all. <clears throat> Let me get to the right minutes here. Was that, was that right? Was that the Lipman application that we need to approve the minutes for, or am I completely wrong about that? Yes, it was. That's right. right. You're right. Okay. January 26th. January 26th. Okay. Got it. So uh, <laughs> I, I would uh, uh, ask for a motion approving uh, the minutes from January 26th. Motion to approve minutes. Thank you, Matthew. Second. Second. Kevin seconds. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor of approval of the minutes? I see myself, Michael, Joe Barbieri, Kevin, Matthew Caton, Michael, and Aaron, uh, all in favor of approval of the minutes from January. All right, so we will move on to having uh, no uh, old business, we'll move on to new business. And that is to hear the request of Pamela Mullen, owner of the property at 44 Two Lights Road, map U37 lot 5-3, variance to construct a farmer porch based on sections 19-5-4 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, and I would ask for, um, Ben McDougal, our code enforcement officer, to give us a, a basic introduction as to uh, as to the application. Sure, uh, Pamela came to me a couple months ago with the idea of putting a farmer's porch on on the front of her house. She lives on a conforming lot in the RA zone, and uh, Two Lights Road is a rural connector street which requires a forty foot front setback. I estimated on a survey that Pamela had done. Uh, that she could probably fit a six foot farmer's porch and meet the 40 foot setback. That was the, the estimate that I made just putting a scale on a survey so that it looked like a six foot farmer's porch could fit. Uh, but she uh, wanted to come in front of you guys for a variance uh, because she felt like eight feet uh, was necessary. And that's it. Okay, good. And before we open this up to, to Pamela, um, have you received any, uh, any commentary, any email feedback or anything like that, Ben, in the meantime, based on the application? Did you hear that? No, I didn't. Oh, I, I said, no, I haven't. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. Well, uh, Pamela, this is your application. We received the submission. We have the paperwork that you submitted. Uh, and at, at this stage in the game, I would ask you to, to offer any, um, uh, an introduction, any thoughts and comments that you have on your uh, application. Yeah, I, I, um, I have had a hard time reading, so understanding some of the questions, but I, I hope it made sense. Um, like, I, like Ben said, I'm just shy of a little bit. I'm not sure if it's two feet or not. I'm really unclear about where you were measuring from, Ben, so that piece I'm not so sure about. Um, the current situation as you step into the front of the house is all rotted out, needs to be replaced. And I thought instead of ripping this off, it has no cover. It would be nice to have a little porch. 
um, instead of what's there now. And I also think it would add to the look of the farm, the farmhouse style in keeping with the other farmhouses up and down Two Lights Road. Um, I was a little bit surprised because I was always under the impression that it was a 30 foot setback. I did a major project uh, back in 2018 and 2019 uh, the project um, was approved by the town in um, the fall of 2018 and Mitchell and Associates did the site work. Um, I believe it was Spurwing uh, surveying uh, did the other work. But the gist of it is these all these plans were approved by the planning board in 2018 and it states the setback road front setback is 30 feet. So I was very, very surprised. I didn't even think I would have to come in front of you guys, but because that was approved back then, but, but obviously things change or I was told that my original plan was wrong from Mitchell and Associates. So that's why I'm coming to you now to see if there would be any wiggle room or, or variance since I'm, since it's so little. But, um, I just want to do it the right way. So that's why I'm coming to you guys. Okay, thank you. And I want to, I first off want to thank all of you for your duty that you're doing to the town. I, I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. Here you are on a Tuesday night. You're not out there watching the sunset. You're doing this, so thank you. All right, do we have um, questions for the applicant? Gavin. So uh, my first question is actually probably more for Ben um, than the applicant, but I, I was reading back through the planning board approval for um, uh, for the 2018, that was the, the daycare extension, right, Ms. Mall? And I, I was curious if, if this application is in the right place because there is a, a site plan approval for this specific site and wouldn't that take precedence over, over the existing zoning for this? And, and there did seem to be a little bit of conflict with, um, with what maybe the planning board approved. I couldn't dig into all of the original site plan approval for the lot. Uh, that's that's an interesting question. I, I think the site plan approval pertains to the, the daycare use on the property. And I think that the, the single family dwelling is is separate from that. So I, I'm not positive that that's the correct answer, but I, I still think this would lie here. Uh, a daycare, a daycare facility, uh, a home daycare is a conditional use up to six kids, a daycare facility uh, requires a planning board approval. And Pamela did get an approval for a daycare facility and actually twice. And she's um, since amended it to have more kids and to do a building expansion. Uh, but I, I, I didn't think that that site plan approval would pertain to the portion of her structure that's a single family dwelling. But they are they are attached, right? They're they're one physical combined structure. Um, I, I I only I only threw that out there because you know I I Ismail, I, I don't know if you know you talked about this with Ben and all, but the standards for a variance are, are pretty high. Um, and you know, I, I just, I throw that out there. We're going to have some discussion, obviously have some more questions for you um, about this, but to the extent that, you know, the, the planning board has already viewed this site multiple times, um, there may be an opportunity um, there, depending on how our discussion goes um, here, because I, I, I sort of view site plan approval as approval for the entirety of a specific project or a specific site. Um, and I realized it was related to the daycare, but I'd want to dig into that a little bit more to, to or, you know, I would suggest you dig into it a little bit more to understand exactly if they did approve a 30 foot setback. Um, that would be interesting. Yeah, I did. 
I did speak to Maureen about the application. You know, I pulled the 2018 approval and made Maureen aware that that this was coming to the zoning board. Uh, and she she didn't flag it as any of her jurisdiction. So if if that's if that's an issue, then neither myself or Maureen was aware, but it's it's possible. And I would just, as far as the 30 foot front setback, uh, I do think that that was uh, simply a mistake on the plan. Whereas every, all the construction going on on the site, uh, you know, a hundred feet back from the road. Uh, I just don't think the, that, that dotted line along the front of the road, that nothing was going on near it just, uh, it just slipped through the cracks, but the setback, uh, the setback on that road has, it's, it's always been 40 feet as, as, as long as I'm aware. Okay. Michael, I see your hand up and uh, Joe, I'm, I'm cognizant that you had your hand up earlier, but I'll hand it to Michael. And then if you okay. want to follow up comment question. Thanks. <clears throat> um, to, it, yeah. I mean, uh, to Kevin's point, I'll, I'll say, you know, if there's an issue with the setback, that's a, that's, a variance request and, and the planning board can't can't approve um, a plan that doesn't meet the setback. But I have a question, Ben, you, you mentioned, and I, I just looked up in the one of our appendices, um, Two Lights Road is a, um, a rural connector. That's right. Which, you know, the table, the table of um, space and bulk standards for the RA and I'm just looking at this now. So if, if, if I'm looking at this wrong or I'm on the wrong page or something, someone sh showed at me, but. What page are you looking at, Michael? So I'm looking at page 71, in, at least in my hard copy that I've been given. So if you go to section 1961, which is the residential aid district uh, and within that, um, Section E, which are the standards. I'm with you. And then a couple pages over. So the and, and so under front setback, it says the front setback uh, may be reduced only on roads which are not classified as arterial, which this is not an arterial, to the average setback of the two principal structures fronting on the same road in closest proximity, uh, but can't be less than 20 feet. So. You know, I, I, we Correct. see this all the time in ordinances. So, you know, a question I have is, um, <clears throat> are there are there two structures? What are the two closest structures? And what are those? What are the setbacks of those structures? Because that's relevant to this discussion. And if they're more than forty feet, it's it's moot, I guess. But um, yeah, one of them, uh, we we went down that path, and uh, one of the structures to uh, further up two lights road from her is, is very close to the front property line, but on the other side of her, the house is far back from the property line. So, so that average didn't work out in her favor. <laughs> bummer. It was a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> now, had we gone the two houses on the other side, it wouldn't have been a problem at all. It's just, we, my, I love my neighbors, the wards and they built further back in. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank, thanks for clarifying that then. Joe. Uh, I, I have two questions. I guess the, the first is for, for Ben. Um, it's going back to that planning board approval. I haven't seen that. Does, did the planning, are there any, um, is, is there any part of the project, either the um, daycare or the house that encroaches right now within, in the, within the 40 foot setback? No. So, so the planning board didn't approve an encroachment within the 40 foot setback. It just showed this, a 30 foot setback on the map. Yes. Okay. So, okay. Um, I, then I guess my other question is for the, for the applicant. Um, uh, uh, ben suggested, I think you want an, an, an eight foot, uh, an eight foot wide porch. And Ben suggested that you would have room for a six foot uh, wide porch, um, uh, and 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 re and stay within the the uh, setback. Is there uh, is it is there some reason that it's infeasible to have a a uh, a porch with a six foot 
uh, that's six feet wide. Well, actually, don't the stairs come out? I think they come out 7.4, didn't we measure? Yeah. Um, right now, if you measure the current stairs, it's 7.4, 7 feet, 4 inches. Um, which, Ben, I'm still a little confused about that because that seems to be in that setback. So, but was it because it's grandfathered? And if it was grandfathered, when did the setback change? Was I, when it was I built in 1992, was it, was it approved? It, it was approved obviously in 1992, but it, it must've been in the setback if it was 40 at that point, but maybe it wasn't 40, maybe it was 30 then. Uh, your, your setback was 40 feet when, when you built your house in 1992. Okay. And I, can't speak to how your stairs got built or where they got built or whether they're infringing on that setback or not. I don't have that evidence. So I guess, Joe, I didn't answer your question. To answer your question, um, the, the, the depth of the porch would look, I think, a little bit better being, that, being eight feet versus six feet. And also, if you were to put a table and chairs out there, you're able to get around. It, that's basically all it is. I mean, okay, thank you. But, but would it be easier? Yeah, probably than having to spend your time talking about this and so forth and so on. So, but um, Matthew, thank you, thank you, Chair uh, Joe. Did you have any? Didn't want to cut you off, Joe. Did you have any other? No, questions? that's fine. Uh, I wanted to draw everyone's attention to um, one of the pages in the packet. It, it hopefully you can see it. It has the the decking uh, of the deck here in front, and there's a side view and there's some some measurements. It's probably the it's the last paper uh, drawings before the photographs. So I, I just want to ask the, the applicant, uh, hope, did you find that page I'm talking about? In, in the bottom, it has in pencil 26 feet, three inches wide. Yes, I see it. Okay. So the, the concern us at, uh, uh, as a board, we're concerned about the setback requirements. And so one of the easiest things that we are concerned about is where is the setback if we're measuring 40 feet? All right. So on this drawing, how far in to the, to the porch is 40 feet? So, uh, well, I mean, wouldn't it be if? The... So, if if you had if you got permission to build the the, the porch, and and, and um, uh, we would like to know how much of the porch that you have drawn is non-conforming. How many inches? That's that's the I, I, that's quite a bit of a quandary because Ben measured on pay. Uh, it's a uh, it's a difficult. Well, I was going to say if if six feet was considered the. Uh, where the line would have been for the 40 foot uh, than 24 inches, right? I think uh, roughly two feet in. So on the drawing, oh, like, yeah, so that, that's your um, interpretation. Uh, I'll ask Ben to, to give some thought as to that as well in a moment. So on the stairs, how many inches or feet does the profile of the stairs go past the railing of the porch? Oh, past the railing. Uh, I'd say four inches. Four inches. Okay, I'm gonna turn to Ben. Uh, okay. Is that your interpretation as well? It's about two feet, the, the, the deck, sorry, the deck. The porch uh, is uh, two feet into the setback? That's that's probably correct. Like, like I said before, I. I put a scale on her planning board approval and thought she could probably do a six foot deck. I didn't measure to the inch, but that, that was my interpretation two months ago when I spent 30 seconds putting a scale on the plan. So I wanna go back to, to this, this page. This would be the, one of the earlier pages in the packet. It looks like it's the, the first drawing uh, after the text. So there's that uh, 30 foot line measuring. Uh, and when you do the measurements, Ben, this is not the document that you measured from? 
That that is uh, a, a snapshot of the planning board doc. Okay. And that that the the black bold line that is standard for the town to use to for for measuring the the setback purposes. Yes, the uh, the bold black line where where the where the dimension comes from is the property line along the road. Yeah. Uh, okay. So thank you both. Um, uh, we're going to struggle on this application. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Gavin. Well, I'm, I'm cognizant I'm going twice, so I don't want to cut anybody else off, but um, if those stairs are there, right now and they come out seven foot four inches wouldn't there be a potential i, I don't know that we we have th this is not the application in front of us but couldn't we uh be potentially looking at um you know just sort of a typical uh you know non-conforming structure expansion not increasing the non-conformity not increasing the non-conformity whatever the 1943b2 I think that requires a legally non-conforming structure. Okay. Well, it has a, it presumably has an occupancy permit. I'm, I'm just I, I, yeah. I, I suggest we not go down that path, but. That, again, that's not the application in front of us. Um, Though that usually pertains to non-conforming structures that were were built and uh, either prior to uh, zoning or or you know when a prior to a, a change in the the setback distance or something like that where we we've heard today that this has a forty foot setback and it's always been a forty foot setback since since the the day the house was built so. Uh, I, you know, if someone builds something that's non-conforming um, at the time they build it, I'm not sure we can then approve a, an expansion of that non-conforming, non-conformity or non-conforming structure. Right. The choice was made at that point in 1992 to place the house where it is, that close to the setback. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Go oh, hello, hello. I can just see your finger there. Okay. Oh, sorry. I got. Uh, I got you. I'm picking up on you now. Okay. No, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm taking two steps forward and three steps back. With regard to this this um, porch that is now se extends seven feet four inches, is that seven feet four inches into the setback? Is that what I understand? No. How how much of that? How much of that? Of that. Um, porch extends into the setback the it, it's it's possible that the there's a landing and three stairs that come down from the front door currently okay. and it's possible that may, maybe the bottom two stairs may encroach into that 40 foot setback i i don't know but it's possible so that would have been, so it would have been, te technically that would be an illegal structure. I mean, I think it's too late in the day to go, go back and probably do anything about it, but that was, that was built after there was already a 40 foot setback. It wasn't like the setback um, uh, was imposed after this was built. This was, this was constructed after, after there was already a 40 foot setback. It was, yes, it was constructed uh, when there was a 40 foot setback. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I don't know the story behind the stairs. It, it, I mean, two stairs in the front setback would be a pretty easy mm -hmm. oversight. Uh, maybe the code officer at the time didn't think that those bottom two stairs would need to meet the setback. That, you know, that interpretation happens sometimes. Right, I, I guess I was, um... I've been thinking along the lines of, of Kevin that if indeed that was we consider that a legal non-conforming structure, then typically 
you'd be able to build out to, to the furthest extent of that. Um, assuming all the, the various criteria were met, but Okay. Matthew. Uh, Joe, I, I take your point there as well. The problem that we now have is that that's not the application in front of us, right? So on the one right. hand, a variance has been requested and now all of a sudden when talking about a substantive change, um, you know, it, we can talk about it. Um, query whether there has to be a different application before us. Uh, and, and assert that particular provision uh, because it, we, we, we would be talking about a linear line across the first step to the width of the, the porch that's going to be built and that would be non-conformity and behind that you could build but not uh, in front of the first step. I think that's what you're talking about, right? That, that's correct. And, and I mean, I, I, don't, I, I, I agree with you because we don't have an application it shows us where, even if you pursued the theory that we're, we've been talking about, we still don't have an application that shows exactly how that would that would work. So we can't we can't consider that now. There's there's, just, three, there's there's three or four roadblocks to going down that path right now. I mean, we can. I don't know if you want to hash them all out right now, or if we want to stick with the application. I. I my sense is we we review the the application on its face, and my presumption is that um, those roadblocks were probably fleshed out as part of the conversation process, as part of the application process with with Ben and with staff. Um, and there's there's likely a reason why uh, the application is is as it is. Um, you know, we can we can dive into we can dive into that rabbit hole if other members of members of the board care to but i think we are uh, you know our obligation is to is to address the the application on its face is my sense do we have uh, other questions for the applicant i want to give oh kevin Sorry, right, just, just just one more, and this might be also for Ben. But if, if, do you have a copy of the Spinnaker Heights subdivision plan? And you know, have, have you looked at that, or same thing to the applicant? Do you have a copy of that handy? I do. I, I don't have a copy handy, but I I reviewed it, and and it doesn't address setbacks that are different from that because that probably was done was certainly done before this zoning ordinance was yeah, enacted. It, yeah, the, the, the subdivision plan specifies a 40 foot front setback. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? All right, hearing none, uh, do we have anybody uh, participating um, as a neighbor, uh, interested party, et cetera. I don't see anybody else here, but I'll leave that to those who are more technologically oriented than I am to determine. Any other uh, any other input? And, and I guess I would say to the extent that anybody's uh, participating in this video conference, um, if, you, if you have an input, we'd invite you to, uh, to speak up. I don't see anyone else. Okay, all right. And Ben, you had mentioned you, you hadn't gotten any feedback from anybody else via email or otherwise. So I, I think what we'll do is we'll, we, we can go ahead and close the, the public portion of the hearing. Uh, Ms. Mullen, we, we may well circle back to you with additional questions. What we'll do now is we'll go into the deliberation part of our meeting where we as the board will consider and discuss and, and make a decision. Uh, there, may be, um, there may be a point where we have some additional questions for you. Uh, and we'll certainly, you know, let, let you know that to the extent that we do. Uh, uh, so we'll, we'll go ahead and close the uh, public portion of the meeting, uh, the public commentary portion of the meeting, I should say. Uh, thoughts? Discussion? Well, I, I do think that we should just proceed on this application itself and not go down the rabbit hole of other, of other ways uh, 
around it to skin the cat. Michael. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, well, I think uh, an, an eight foot porch would be great. I think it would fit in with the neighborhood. Um, you know, as a few people, few of the members here have uh, commented the variance standards are difficult and they're difficult for a reason. Um, you know, the, the one I always um, find very difficult to meet um, and you have to go to you have to go to state law to find this definition, but but our ordinance references um, specifically says that without the variance, um, there would be a practical difficulty um, resulting from that. And when you look up what a practical difficulty is in in, in state law, it talks about if uh, you know if the if the variance isn't granted, that the the applicant um, or it would result in significant economic hardship to the applicant. And I, I just think that's an extremely difficult standard to meet. I think it, it I think the state intended as much um, and the town adopts that uh, obviously. And um, what that means here, unfortunately, from my perspective is that um, that I, I'm, I'm not in support of the variance. I, all, <laughs> you know, although I, I do think a, a, the, the port you'd like to build in this mall and I, I think would be great, but, um, but uh, unfortunately I don't think we have um, the ability to approve that. Thanks. Joe, I see another couple of fingers there. Go for it, bud. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have a, a chair that rocks back. Um, uh, well, I, I, I agree with, uh, with Michael. Um, actually, the, the definition of, of um, practical difficulty has two components to it. One, as Michael pointed out, is the the significant economic injury, which has a separate definition of, or of, its, of its own. But the first part of the practical difficulty is where the strip act application of the, of the ordinance precludes the ability of the property owner to pursue a use permitted in the zoning district in which the property is located. And that's a very, very difficult standard to meet. And I don't see how, um, I, an ordinance is necessary to allow the property owner to pursue a use, the, the use whether the use is the house or the use is uh, as a deck, um, they could go forward without the so without the uh, variance. So, you know, while you know I would sleep well tonight if this got approved, I, I just I just don't see it meeting the standards of of a variance. Kevin and then Matthew. Yeah, I mean, I, I won't add to uh, agreeing with with Mike and Joe on that. I think the practical difficulty, I, I actually think, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of work to be done to the zoning ordinance. Um, some of that's upcoming. I think this is one where there could be a little variation because if you look at the ands, the A, B, C, D, E, and F, I would make a case that um, this application actually meets all of those uh, standards. It just doesn't meet the the uh, I, don't, I don't think those, i don't put those as facts I say, i'm saying i could make a case that um it, it meets each one of those but it doesn't meet that first test and i think that's unfortunate because i think that this is exactly the sort of thing that you know we should have it's you know two feet into an area where there are homes that are constructed well uh within that 40 foot setback because they've been there forever um, it's, so it's a unique circumstance of the property. There's not going to be an undesirable change in, in the neighborhood. Um, it's not going to detrimentally impact property values. I could say that, yeah, you know, to, to have a nice chair out there, you'd want it to be that size. Um, it just doesn't meet it because of our zoning code. And there's really no way to, to get around that. I'd prefer to see a definition of, of practical difficulty that was a little bit looser and provided, um, us a little more leeway to, to say yes, but uh, unfortunately, the variant standard as it's written doesn't, I don't think let us do that. Matthew, I think you were up next and then I see Aaron's hand as well. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Kevin and or Ben, uh, you mentioned that the code may be um, uh, reviewed or rewritten in certain sections. Is that a true statement or? There's a were... public meeting on April 20th, the town center zoning, not this section. So does everyone agree that the, the code is unlikely to be written at least this section in the, in the next year? 
You can nod, yes or no. Do you think, I mean, this is it. I mean, it's unlikely to be moving, right? So my proposal was that the applicant uh, interpreting the winds of the, of the board here is that withdraw the application and, and see if the um, uh, code changes, but that's not unlikely to be the case because it is the code it's been approved and we're stuck with uh, the requirements under the code here dealing with variances. So uh, I, I like Joe, I, I'll be sleeping good tonight if we approve this application, but um, the, the paragraphs that we're looking at dealing with the variance is quite strict and in a high standard. I'm troubled that we're, we're not close, notwithstanding Kevin's uh, passionate commentary on each, some of the paragraphs. Um, I, I, there's a couple that are very hard sticks uh, that I don't know how you'd get past it. That said, uh, you can't have a portrait that's six feet wide, um, but not eight or seven feet, four inches, for example. Uh, that's my commentary. Aaron. Yeah, just one, I think one last point about the, we're talking about practical difficulty with the definition. I, I think regardless of what the definition is, the, the test of the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or prior owner. I mean, in like I alluded to earlier in 1992, with full knowledge of the setback, the prior owner, whoever built the house, put it where it is and had full, would have had full knowledge of that setback. So that's a prior action in, in C there. Additional comments. Yeah, I mean, and, and Ms. Mullen, I mean, I, I just, uh, I'll echo what everybody else has said and I'll make it brief, um, but we're, we're somewhat, we're handcuffed by the language of, of state law and the ordinance. Um, and that first prong, the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted is a is a really high hurdle and while while we you know we do everything we can to work with applicants we are constrained by state law and by uh, local ordinances um which is uh not always comfortable uh as as was stated by a, a couple of the other members of the board we could all sleep quite well tonight if we approve this but given the, the technical language um doesn't seem like we can do so. So, you know, just, just reading the tea leaves here, it, it sounds like uh, we will entertain a motion to uh, deny the request of Pamela Mullen, owner of the property at 44 Two Lights Road, map U37, lot 53, for a variance to add a farmer porch to the house. Um, anybody care to make that motion? Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm just to be clear, I'm not making that motion. I'm, I'm wondering, it, it seems like there's a, a an unknown of just what that, um, you know, that dimension is on the survey. Um, I, I, I would almost wonder if it, you know, if, if the applicant would entertain um, either withdrawing the application until a, a survey is complete, um, or I'd, I'd be inclined even to, to table this. Um, until such time as we actually had that survey to know, you know, that we were acting on um, an actual, you know, application that didn't meet um, the setback criteria. So I, I, I would just throw that out there. I'm not sure that I would um, be in favor of, of denying the application without uh, having that information, or at least having the applicant have the opportunity to provide that information. Fair enough. Fair enough. Aaron, I saw your hand up there. Yeah. So basically, if the applicant does the survey and basically figures out exactly where that 40 foot line is, then redesigns the plan to put the porch, the replacement within that line, it doesn't even get to us again. It goes to Ben and it gets approved. Right? Correct? Yes. That would be my understanding. Okay. So is there, I don't even know if I can ask this, but is there any reason at all we do need to deny it? Can we, is it better? Yeah, it's the applicant's choice as to whether to press forward with us right now. And we can't, we, there's not really any reason to go so though. Jim, you have to have the expense of paying them to do a survey just to make the six feet. Well, that would have to happen anyway. Right, right. And he, here's how I look at it. And I'm, and I'm thinking aloud, which is generally a mistake, but, uh, if the survey, so if we were to deny the application, if the survey were to reveal that that is outside of the setback, then it doesn't come back here. It doesn't come back to the zoning board regardless. 
Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, I don't. I don't see any any harm in denying this application. I mean, essentially, we're saying you you keep you know there's no variance. Uh, we're we're denying a variance to build a porch within the setback. I mean, uh, yeah. there's no. That's I, it. It, it's not going to prevent the the applicant from building a, a conforming porch. Yeah, and a survey won't change that because it yeah. would just be showing that it wasn't uh, outside the and setback. She, she has a survey, so I mean. Okay. Right. So that means that I, I will make I, I will make your motion, Mike, um, to uh, to deny the request of Pamela Mullen, owner of the property at forty four Two Ledge Road, Map U thirty seven, Lot five three, for a variance to add a farmer's porch to the house. All right. Do we have a second? I'll second that. All right. Aaron seconds. Uh, that opens it for discussion. I think we've, we've talked at relatively uh, good length about this, but any additional thoughts or comments uh, before we vote? All right, hearing none, all in favor of the motion to deny the request. Mike Valancourt. Michael tatama yes. Kevin Just, yes. Joe Barbieri, yes. Aaron Moser, yes. Matt Caton, yes. All right. So the the application is is denied, um, and then we proceed to. Well, let's see. Do we need to do the findings of fact? I guess I guess we no. I, I don't think we do if the application is denied, right? You think I'd know this? It's been a few years. <laughs> Uh, and 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 Ms. Mullen, um, I, I get. I, I guess we we. Uh, yeah, I, I don't believe that. Well, let me open this up to the board as far as the as the findings of fact. Um, I, I guess we. I, I guess we probably should. Yeah, I think. I think you should probably do the findings and yeah at least the uh the initial findings of fact the basic findings of fact and then right. in, instead of going into the questions you could simply state uh that the applicant hasn't demonstrated that there's a practical difficulty and and leave it at that and not go through the series of questions okay okay Sounds good. So, um, so Ms. Mullen, what we're going to run through findings of fact. This is a legal re requirement of ours. Um, you, you know, you're welcome to, to listen in on this. We won't be in incredibly offended if you don't. We always encourage applicants to to stay on uh, to to stick with us for the uh, for the remainder of the findings, just so you hear what we have to say. Um, uh, obviously, we're not. You know, nobody's terribly happy about this this particular outcome, but we are. Um, constrained as a board to abide by town ordinance and by state law. So we'll move forward with our findings of fact. Uh, proposed findings of fact one, Pamela and Peter Mullen are the owners of the property. Proposed finding of fact two, the subject is a conforming lot in the RA zone. The lot was approved by the planning board in 1988 with a 40 foot front setback shown on the approved Spinnaker Heights subdivision plan. Proposed finding of fact three, Pamela and Peter Mullen purchased the lot and construct the existed ho existing house in 1992. Proposed finding of fact four, Two Lights Road is classified as a rural connector street and therefore the zoning ordinance requires a 40 foot setback. Proposed finding of fact five, the property is currently used as a single family dwelling with an attached daycare facility and proposed finding of fact six, no part of the property is located in the Shoreland Overlay District. To enter, entertain a motion um, to approve the proposed uh, findings of fact, I'll move into the additional findings in a moment. So moved. Michael, so moves. Do we have a second? Second. Kevin seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the proposed findings of fact. Mike Valancourt. Michael tatamo yes. Joe Barbieri, yes. Kevin Just, yes. 
Aaron Mosier, yes. Matt Caton, yes. And then as far as the uh, proposed additional findings of fact, uh, the, the board finds that the applicants do not meet the requirements for a variance set forth within the town of Cape Elizabeth zoning ordinance and state law. And in particular that the land in question can yield a reasonable return without a variance being granted. Michael. <clears throat> yeah, so I just wanted to point out that the additional findings of facts that are listed um, on our um, draft findings, there are, you know, there are four of them. The first one is the land in question cannot yield a reasonable uh, return unless a variance is granted. That's actually, I don't believe that's um, one of the standards for a variance that's not in the shoreland zone. I think that pertains to only to variances in the shoreland zone. That um, is true. So I, I think what we're talking about here, Mike, is, I mean, very similar, uh, but the, you know, when you talk about practical difficulty as it's, as it's um, defined in state law. So I, I would propose that that additional finding um, kind of more as Ben suggested, read um, that um, literal, the literal enforcement of the ordinance uh, will not cause a practical difficulty as defined by 30A AMRSA section 4353-4C. Which, and that language is right out of our ordinance. Very good. Makes sense, makes sense to me. Any other comments on that? Okay. All in favor of the additional findings of proposed additional findings of fact as articulated by Michael. Michael Tatamuelan, yes. Aaron Barbier, yes. Kevin Just, yes. Matt Caton, yes. Yes. All right, so th th that concludes um, our process uh, with respect to your your property, with your, respect to your application, Ms. Mullen. Um, you know, I'd, I'd urge you to continue to work with Ben, with the town, to to work out how best to address your your, your porch and your entryway to the home. Um, and I'm just um, I'm sorry we couldn't be more accommodating, but like I said, we've we're, we've got to uh, apply both local ordinance and state law. So uh, we appreciate the application, appreciate the opportunity to speak with you and and with you, wish you all the best with, with, with working that out. And said it would be difficult. <laughs> thank you though. Okay, thank you. It. Thank you. And uh, do we have any communications, any, anything else we need to cover, Ben? I think you mentioned earlier, oh, Matthew. Uh, I just want to mention that I'll email to the board members uh, this page from the, the zoning manual uh, about um, uh, applicants and whether they have to be present at the hearing or not. Um, the answer is no, they don't have to be present. Okay. There are strings attached to that, but generally speaking, it would be great the applicant being there. Thank you, Ms. Mullins. And, uh, but you know, it's, there are ways around that if there's, for whatever reason, an issue comes up. So. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Matthew. All right, uh, not seeing any further commentary or questions, we'll go ahead and adjourn. Have a uh, have a good evening, all. Thank Thanks you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.